Hey guys, this week, this happens. We get some work done on the travel all. Hey guys, welcome back to Alchemy Motorsports. Last week kicked my butt. This cab corner down here wasn't really going all that well. So this episode. We're going to try and make it go better. But because it went so poorly last time, I got to start in my happy place. Let me show you guys one of my favorite sounds in the entire world. Oh yeah. Start with a happy beverage, then we'll go from there. Oh. Yeah, I don't actually drink, but I love me some Mountain Dew. Ah, uh, yeah. Anyway, that cab corner kicked my butt. And now we've got to do more work on it to try and get it to a point where I'm actually satisfied with it. I'm not all that happy with how everything was turning out, but I've got to grind it back and really take a look at it before I know exactly where I'm going to land. For those of you who are new here, this is Project Tahoe, where we're sticking a 1971 International Travel All on top of a 2003 Tahoe floor pan. We're keeping the interior, the rear air conditioning, all those amenities, and just integrating them back in to this vintage body. So it'll have everything that was nice about a Tahoe in 2003, which granted at this point is now a 20 year old vehicle, but it's still 25 years newer. Well, at least 22 years newer, I'm good at math. Than the Tahoe, or the Travelog. Man, it's a rough night. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, now we're still finishing up tying this body down to the actual floor pan of the travel all. If you missed me getting it handed to me last week, there's a link up above right here so you can see the work we put into that corner and just how well it didn't really go for me. Also, down below you'll find the link to the entire project so you can see where we started and if you're interested, watch all the episodes to see how far we've come. Anyway guys, me and this here beverage, we're going to get stuck into fixing that corner. Well, having met with mostly failure trying to hammer that out, although I may need to do a little down in there, um, we're going to try something else. So I built this here slide hammer a while ago. It's actually a Subaru shift knob, some fat washers, a chunk of pipe, and a really long extension with a bolt welded on the end. And then I'm slowly making pieces that thread onto it. This is just a regular pair of vice grips I welded a lug nut onto that happens to be the right thread pitch. So that there is my home built slide hammer. I built it out of just crap I have laying around, so real cost is basically nothing. Though I probably spent $5 in the junkyard on that shift knob. Everything else, no idea. So, what we are going to do is some extremely ghetto stud welding, because I don't have a stud welder. And we're going to try and weld some studs along this, then use the slide hammer to see if we can pull this out a little bit. I don't know if this is going to work at all, but it'll be fun to try. So what I have are just some nails. And we are going to attempt to weld those nails to the body. Alright, so those welded on okay. Now we're just going to see what if we can uh, Get some good pull on them.
at least one of those was a good weld, because I just tore a nice little hole in that thing. <laughs> Alright, let's see where we are. Alright, well, I don't really seem to be able to pull it as much in this corner, which, let's be honest, isn't a huge surprise. It's a pretty tight corner. I pulled it out some for sure, but over here on the side, I think it looks really good. You guys might be able to see how much air gap there is there, and that's just going to have to be there. I'm not going to try pulling that any farther. On the original travel all side, this was a perfectly flat, like smooth plane. And I've got that more or less on the sides. It's just right through the corner that I don't. And I'm just going to consider that lesson learned and finish the corner from here and call it good enough, especially because it it is going to be hidden as the bumper wraps around. So at least I've proven that my uh, I don't have a stud welder, I'm too cheap to buy one, I'm just going to weld nails to my car theory. Does work. It definitely pulled. So I can use that in the future. But I think now it's just time to finish grinding these back and then go back for my touch-up round. Holy balls. Yeah, that looks terrible in that way. Overall, this really didn't go that well. This shape is not really what I want it to be. I think to fix it, I would have to cut it from here to here and then down this to hammer everything outward and then fill in the middle. I'm trying to decide if that's really worth it because this is all hidden by the bumper. But it also bothers me to leave something not very good. Maybe I could cut it from here to here and here, so cut less. And then I could hammer some of that out better because it wouldn't be tied in over here. And all of this is okay. It could use a little more hammer forming, but it's okay there. Yeah, I think I'm going to cut it and try again. I just, I'm not happy with that. And I don't care that it's hidden. I want it to be something I can feel good about. Well, there we go. We're going to try some more. We're going to make it better. Because kind of okay isn't good enough. Decently okay. Now that's good enough.
No idea what I was looking at, no idea what I was thinking, but this is completely the wrong shape. It's nice and smooth, like I did a good job, but it's so completely wrong, I have no idea what the hell I was trying to do. Round three. So here's the welded up results of round three. I finally have the flat contour that it's supposed to have. Round two resulted in coming down in a big old bulge. I don't know what I did there. So that's why I had to cut it all apart again. But had to shape a centerpiece and just cut a big chunk out. Under here is a complete mess. You can see the way the pieces don't fit together at all. So that's going to take quite a bit of work. I also don't know how much of this I'll be keeping. A lot of this might get trimmed back some. Um, we'll see as we tie everything together. But it took me three tries. However, I finally have a shape that I'm actually happy with in here. So we'll grind this all back probably take a couple of rounds and then we will finally be able to wrap up the rest of this corner with the pieces that go underneath and inside and all that fun. I realized the footage does not really show why I was so frustrated, why I ended up doing that entire project three different times. So I made up some fantastic visual aids so that you guys see a little better what was going on. This is the shape of the travel all along that corner stock. Imagine if you were standing at the back and looking down it toward the wheel well up ahead. So it's just a nice smooth straight line down to a transition around the corner. Well that first time I finished it and I considered leaving it alone, this is what I had ended up with. So I ended up with this large quarter inch jog just in the middle of it, where it just simply tucked in really far. The seam was along here, and everything just sort of pulled in tightly all the way around that corner. And while I considered leaving it because it was at least partially hidden by the bumper, I just, I didn't learn anything. I'm not learning to do this stuff better, so I had to try again. But this is what that looked like to me even though you can't see it on the camera. So that's when I cut everything apart and started hammering it all out. When I did the second one, I ended up here. So I ended up with this big bulge you can see in the orange here. I was checking the flatness with a, just the tip of a flat hammer, but for whatever reason, I was just checking how well they were touching across here, not even noticing that I'd actually created this giant bulge. So that's why I had to cut it apart again. So once I cut that out and removed it, I was then able to get something pretty close to this, and with it pretty consistent around the turn. But that's what required me to actually cut that whole inch out of the middle and add a whole new piece into it to get that all to work right. So. This is what I was looking at, even though it doesn't seem anywhere near this on the camera. The camera makes things look way better than they actually are. 
but it was because of these huge problems that I ended up just cutting everything back apart and doing it all again. We finished the construction of this corner. I was getting really frustrated, so there's a lot that you guys didn't see. Welding, touching up, grinding back, screwing something up, hammering it so it was had more contour, splitting a weld, welding it up, fixing it, then getting under here and trying to fix some holes that were under this side, and that took four different tries, and I just, ah... Uh, this thing has really frustrated me. But it's done now. It is not amazing. This was a really, really hard piece to get even to semi-acceptable, and at least it will be hidden by a bumper kind of status. That may not show very well in the video, so you'll just have to trust me. Maybe in the video it looks pretty darn good. It isn't. This panel, this is all okay. This whole section worked out okay. It's once we hit the curve and go around the curve that it really started to give me a lot of trouble. And you can see even now, this still isn't flat the way it's supposed to be. There's a lot of bulge to it through here. And that's after I've spent a while with hammer and slapper knocking some of that down, but I ended up with so much weld in here that it's just not very mobile anymore. So it just kind of is what it is. But we've got all that finished and basically ground back, though there is still obviously some work to do under here. All right, we ground all that up, or welded it in, and then ground it back. So we've got three spot welds. There's one here, one here, and one under here. And then I also finished welding in that seam there. So we're pretty far along underneath here. We've got to fill in that gap right there and finish this curve. And then the other thing that has to be decided, basically, to finish this off is how much of this am I going to keep? How far back do I go before cutting it all off? So I will need to decide how much of that I'm keeping and run a line and cut that down. Then once I cut it, I'm actually going to come back and bend it down so it's got a lip on it as well. So put a nice little slice in the edge of this thing, deep enough to give me a good flange. I tested it right here and it seemed to work out pretty well. So I'm just gonna work my way along and flange this whole thing now. None of it's welded the last two inches, so that's why they're a little uneven, but as I go back and stitch them all together, it should line up pretty well. And I'm also hoping that this gives me a good spot to spot weld to when I do the drop downs for the interior.
after a ridiculous amount of work on this corner. I think we're basically done. There's a little bit more we need to do that I haven't figured out yet, but I'm not too worried about it. It is literally three inches that I'm trying to figure out, so we're going to move on from there. So, you saw how I welded up, turned down the flange, and then welded up everything on this underside. I've now finished grinding it back. There was a hole over here that I filled, and then welded and grinded along there, and there, and more or less right there. The three inches in question is how I'm going to do this. I don't know if I'm going to do a flange on this section or what I'm going to do to tie it into the floor pan. We'll just have to see. But that's basically the entire driver's quarter finished. I also ground back this, so it's all clean and ready to go as well. So that is basically everything on this exterior driver's quarter. Totally done. Not as happy as I could be, but it's pretty good and I think it's solid. Once bumpers hiding it all, it won't look bad at all. Beyond the fact that I am going to go over every single seam with some, uh, um, basically fiberglass Bondo instead of just the, uh, talcum powder style stuff. Since that, I'm told, is actually waterproof, so it will seal the welds in case they're imperfect. It'll also give a little bit of extra strength to them and some smoothness. So I'll probably go over all of my seams with that stuff before I paint everything, though when I paint it, I'm going to be shooting basically for a kind of patina match type thing. With that whole quarter done, I went ahead and painted the inside of all of that as well. I don't think I'm quite ready to turn to building the interior there, but I do think we're done enough to get all that done. So we cleaned that out, threw in some rust paint on top of the rust areas, and then used a self-etch primer on top of the bare metal areas. So hopefully that'll do what we needed to. So now, I think it's time to turn our attention to locking this back end in place which will mean this panel that I rebuilt in here. Let's see if we, nope. This panel that I rebuilt in here will get a turnout piece to the bumper. But before we do that, we need to just clean this piece up, double check everything on it and then we can give it a turnout as well. I would like to do both of those at the same time. So next step is to clean all of this down some and maybe weld up that hole you can see right there and then we will get it prepped and ready for the turnout to lock this body into place against the rear bumper. We got that cab corner done. That was the big thing. Everything else on top of that honestly was gravy. That cab corner just took so much work, I can't believe it. I spent hours on it. And even now, like I said, it's not amazing, it's pretty ugly, but it's pretty close to being there. So the next cap corner I do, hopefully that'll turn out halfway decent instead of mostly terrible. Anyway guys, we've got this whole quarter pretty much all ready to go. Coming up next, I really want to get the body tied down here at the back. It's been sitting on those supports since I originally set this body down, and I need to get those supports out of the way so I can start figuring out the rear interior. So, tying this body down to the floor pan here at the back is going to be our next step. We'll get that figured out, and then I think it's time to start figuring out some of these interior pieces. Thanks for watching the show. If you stuck around this long, please give me a thumbs up. It helps other people find the channel, and I appreciate it. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.